Hello, this is Margaret Murphy and I'm Helen Pepper and we are Ashley Dyer. Hi, so this afternoon I finally realised what a reprobate Margaret is and decided to arrest her. So now we need to process her into custody. Um, so one of the first things that we need to do is we need to take a DNA sample from her so that we can search it against her, our database and all her old crimes are going to come back to haunt her. Yes, um, so here I've got a DNA kit, which is the standard kit that we use that is refusing to open for me. got a lot of paperwork we're not going to bother with at the moment and the kit that we need to use first thing I need to do is put on these really elegant and stylish gloves they might like, look like the ones that you see on the garage forecourt but these ones have actually been specially treated to make sure that they're DNA free Unfortunately, they never fit anybody, so you're always left with a little flappy bit at the end. Then I need to check that the rest of the kit is there. This is the bag that I'm going to put the sample in when I've finished. These little pots, which are called Eppendorf pots, um, are what the sample is going to go into. And I've got the swabs that I need to take the sample with. So, first of all, I need to say to Margaret, have you had anything to eat or drink in the last 20 minutes? No. Are you not very happy today, Margaret? I'm very unhappy. Why is that? Because you're going to find out all my past crimes. About all your serial killer tendencies. Now, <laughs> this is actually quite difficult to do with the gloves on, so it takes a little bit of fiddling. But... If you look at the swab, they're not the same as medical swabs that they use in hospitals. These are more like filter paper cones, and that's so that they can collect the DNA sample. What we're actually going to do is use the swab to scrape some of the lining from the inside of the cheek. Um, it's completely painless. If I do it properly, you won't Good leave at all. <laughs> so... Right, open the little pots ready and open this one a little bit as well so that once I'm on a roll I can keep going. So what I'm going to ask you to do is just open your mouth for me whilst I take the sample and I'm going to press firmly on the side of your cheek and I'm just going to rub up and down. Half a dozen to ten times. No blood. So you're not going to be able to sue me for brutality or anything. And then I just put that into the pot. And then straight into the sample bag. If I put it down on the table, it's guaranteed to roll off onto the floor and I'll never see it again. And what if I refuse to co cooperate now? Ah, well, we'll talk about that in a moment. It's not in your best interest. Okay. I need to take a second swab. It really doesn't matter whether it comes from the same side or from the other side, but I'm a bit of a balanced person, so I like to do one from either side. So if you can open your mouth for me again. And go roll up and down. Pop it into the pot, into the bag, and these are actually special evidence bags that have a special tamper evidence seal on, so that we would know if anyone tried to fiddle with this after I've sealed it up. So if I pull the back in off. and seal the bag up. I don't need these anymore because the DNA is now secure. If I try and open that up again, it's very difficult. If I do actually manage it, I don't know if you can see this, 
but the adhesive on the seal breaks down and you can actually see it, it says the word stop. And we can't get rid of that now. So if I sent this into the lab, they would know someone had been trying to get into there. So we know that we've got these samples secure. The reason that you don't want to um, resist me when I'm taking a DNA sample is because there are other ways of taking the sample. If you won't let me take a sample from your mouth, my next option is to start pulling your hair out. Oh, okay. So we really don't want to go there, no, do we? No. So if we can't take a sample of buccal cells, the ones from the lining of the mouth, then we move to hair roots. So it's just as well that you've been cooperative today. Because okay. that was quite painless. You you felt the, the combs going up and down, but there was absolutely no pain at all. No. And I noticed that it kind of has a, an ejector Yes, cotton. yes, you, you, you eject it. it off the end of the tube, right. which until you know that's what it does, you try and put it all the way into the tube and it won't come off the end of the stick. You can mm. have hours of fun with trainee police officers before you tell them that. Um, but that's it. It really is that straightforward. And now we've got your DNA and if you've ever done anything wrong, it's going to come back to bite you. Okay. Now, one final question. This Will this go to a specific lab or will it be an internal police lab? Um, it goes to labs that are licensed by the forensic science regulator to process DNA samples. So it's not done internally right. in the police force at all. Okay. Um, the, the DNA database doesn't actually belong to the police mm -hmm. as such. Um, it's administered by the forensic science regulator. So no, the police don't have the option to fiddle with your samples or mm -hmm. you know, try and set you up for anything. So I can't get out of it that way? No, no, okay. you've just got to take responsibility. Okay.